Hello gang, welcome back to the channel. I truly hope you're doing great. In today's video, I would like to share with you a detailed breakdown of my latest Ironman race, which started off as a total nightmare pre-race week getting sick, but ended up being one of the most beautiful and emotional experiences of my life. I finished Ironman Tallinn 2022 in 10 hours and 18 minutes, managing to take one hour and 15 minutes off my previous personal best and truly giving it my all. I changed a lot of things from my first Ironman, both in gear, nutrition, mindset. And I'm gonna do my best to share all these things with you and try to provide some specific and actionable information that you can apply to your own journey and that might help you with your races. First off, I want to say, if you ever had the dream or desire to do an Ironman, do it. It is so worth it. This was truly one of the most intense experiences of my life. Why this race? Well, the first time, the biggest disadvantage was not knowing the course well. By choosing the same race, all of these became points in my favor. I now knew that the swim conditions were brutally low visibility and that I had to prepare for a hilly mountain. Another reason why I chose Ironman Tallinn is because it is normally a cool race, so it isn't super hot, and it was at the perfect time, so at the beginning of August, which was fairly early because I didn't really train that long, but it was a good date so that if it didn't go as planned, I could have a shot at another race in this season without having to wait for the next. Another thing I changed was mindset. Last time, I felt like I had left a lot on the course. Just finishing was the priority not having a good time or performance. This time I wanted to leave every single drop of energy I had out there on the course, no holding back. The first time I raced with fear. This time I raced with courage, emotion, gratitude, while being smart and not overdoing it, but without holding back too much. I believe I raced with passion this time. To start off, let me give you some context by talking about race week. The weekend before the race, I started feeling sick. At my last long swim, I started really feeling bad. I did a 3.8 kilometer continuous swim in the morning in my local lake, and then I did a three hour and 30 minute session on the TT bike, and then I felt absolutely thrashed. I kind of felt off. The next morning, I did a 14 kilometer run, and man, I got back home and I had to go to sleep. Seriously, the only thing that I could do when I got back home was go back to bed. That was how bad I was feeling. Monday, I packed all my stuff and I flew to Tallinn and I was feeling so weak. I felt like I had a fever, even though I didn't really have a fever, but this prompted me to decide to rest for two full days. This was not ideal at all, as I had to forfeit the bike recon loop and I had to push back on the swim recon, but it was absolutely mandatory. I had absolutely no choice. I needed to rest. I rested Monday, Tuesday, but I didn't feel any better. So a little update. I still can't believe this is happening, but I'm feeling really sick. On Wednesday, I had to go to athlete registration and was still feeling like total garbage. I was so weak, I couldn't even get the energy to build my bike back up, which is absolutely insane. It was an insane feeling. I felt like completely drained of every single energy and I felt like I had a fever. It was terrible. I took all of Wednesday off resting and on Thursday morning, I woke up and I thought I felt a bit better. So I built the bike back up. I went for a super easy spin, feeling kind of meh, like I did one hour and 10 minutes, something like that. And then I went for the swim recon, which was something that I was absolutely going to do. I came home and I sort of felt, okay, I was in high spirits. But Friday morning, I woke up feeling worse than all the previous days. And on top of that, my resting HR was 10 beats higher than normal. I slept really badly and my stress levels were super high. This was absolutely not a good sign. I was really feeling down at this point. I took three COVID tests to ensure that I wa it wasn't that and they came back all negative. And I thought at least this is good news. I mean, it's not COVID. So I decided even if I wasn't feeling good, I would give it my best shot. I switched on just do it mode. I stopped overthinking stuff and just started doing all the things that needed to be done for race prep. I started preparing all the gear for transition preparation and racking. 
The gear that I used this time was basically kind of all new. Specifically, it was. For general triathlon and swim, it was a PPR Team 2022 tri suit made by Ale, a Garmin 945 GPS watch, Garmin HRM Pro HR strap, Super Sapiens CGM sensor with a Super Sapiens energy band for continuous glucose monitoring during the race. I used a Sumapo Victory wetsuit for the swim, Form Smart swim goggles, and a head neoprene cap. For the bike, I had my new Argon 18 E117 tri bike with a set of Mavic Cosmic 55mm wheels, SRAM Red electronic group set, four eyes power meter, a completely rethought cockpit with an extra long and high rise profile design aero bars, and a windshield in between the aero bars. I also had upgraded to a Brico TT helmet with a mirrored visor, and shoes were the same as I had the other time, so DMT KR1 shoes. On the bike, to track everything, I had a brighter ride a 750 bike computer. I also changed the nutrition and hydration setup, going for a three bottle setup. One aero bottle on the frame for carbs, one normal bottle on the handlebars for more diluted carbs, and one larger bottle in the back of the saddle for water and electrolytes. For the run, also I had completely rethought everything. The other time I had used Hoka Bondi shoes for the run. This time I went for the Nike Alpha Fly. These shoes make an incredible difference and they will give you a lot of free speed. So I absolutely went for it and got them. I also had a Super Sapiens trucker hat to keep me cool but shaded from the sun and some Sumapo Performance sunglasses. Another thing that I paid a lot of attention to and tested extensively and basically completely revamped from the first time was the nutrition strategy. Nutrition strategy that I came up with for this time was completely different. Through time I'd learned that very probably I underrate in 2020. So this time I tested nutrition with 100 plus grams per hour of carbs during training using Super Sapiens. Super Sapiens is a continuous blood glucose monitor that shows what your levels are in real time. This I found to be very helpful because it can display if it's trending up or down. And glucose values are basically the amount of energy you have in your body and the energy that's going around. On the energy band, you can see the trends are up or down and it doesn't require a phone, so you can use it during the race. And in training, what I found out was that I could handle more than 100 grams of carbs. So I said to myself, shovel in as much food as possible. I put a 500 milliliter Monster Energy in my T1 bag with one gel. I filled the front aero bottle on the bike with 500 milliliters of maple syrup and the front bottle on the aero bars with 250 grams of cane sugar diluted with water. And I carried four gels with me, opting to rely on aid stations for water and electrolytes. And I added electrolytes in my back bottle as well. For the run, I was going to do cola and sports drink at every aid station as much as I could drink. Plus I had six gels with me and I was going to keep on taking gels at aid stations. I also had some vegan gummy bears basically everywhere in my T1 bags and if I needed them, I would have them. The course in Tallinn is a lake swim with a one loop 3.8 kilometer course. The course has different buoys, red for the left turns, white for the right turns with some signaling buoys between the longer stretches. The water temperature this year was 22 degrees, so fairly warm. It was a wetsuit legal swim. The only key factor is the very low visibility in the lake, which is not like super hard thing per se, but it just needs some getting accustomed to. The bike course in Tallinn is a fairly flat two loop bike course that starts from the swim, goes all around the countryside. It's actually pretty beautiful. One stretch along the sea, then has a turnaround point before the city of Tallinn, which you do and go back into the countryside. And then after you finish the second loop, you end up at the seaplane Taba in Tallinn. It can be very windy. It can have very dramatic weather changes as we're going to see very soon. And the total ascent is around 500 or 600 meters. The road quality ranges from awesome and perfect to do to some more rugged sections, but nothing really too bad. The run course in Tallinn is a very rolling run course with around 300 meters of elevation over the course of 42.2 kilometers. And it starts from the seaplane harbor, it runs along the sea, and then it heads up into town where there are some pretty brutal uphill sections with cobblestones, and then heads all the way back to the seaplane harbor where you start the second loop and on the fourth loop you can head to the finish line. The course is very nice with a lot of supporters along the way. I paid a lot of attention also to transition preparation. Having all the bags prepared, I stuck my stickers on the bike and helmet and I was off to rack the bike.
Transition 1 in Tallinn is close to the swim start, so a different location from T2, which is in town. This year it was super cool, as in you dropped everything off at T1 and they would take your run bag to T2 and rack everything for you. So I just focused on forgetting that I was feeling bad, I racked my bike, protecting the electronic parts from the rain as it was forecast to be raining a bit. I hung my bag and I headed straight home to try and rest as much as I could. The last two days before the race, I'd switched to a no fiber diet and all I ate was as much white rice with soy sauce as my body could handle, which was actually lower than usual because I was feeling so sick. And every time I would eat something, my heart rate would spike up to 80 or 90, probably because of the added stress of digestion. And this was something that really was giving me bad vibes, to be honest. I also tried to get in some cornflakes with rice milk and sugar. So I switched to a low fiber and a gluten-free diet. On Friday, the day before the race, I went to bed at 5 p.m. with an eye mask and I tried to sleep or just rest. The alarm for race day was very early, so I was aiming to bank as much rest as possible. In complete honesty, I was feeling really bad. I was actually feeling sick. Even just walking up flights of stairs was hard and would leave me with my heart basically pounding. I had zero confidence in how the day was going to unfold. I was going to show up, do my best, but it was not doing good. My goal in coming to Tallinn for a second time was to go sub 11 hours. I knew that I could do it and I was faithful. I was aiming for 10 hours and 15 minutes and I would have been super stoked on a 10.30. But now being sick, I had to completely readjust my goals. Only important thing was to show up and try and finish no matter the time. I was going home with that medal, that was certain, but I had no clues how it was gonna feel the next day and I just switched off the lights and I hoped for a miracle, basically. Woke up at 3.30 a.m. and I was bolt upright in seconds. I went to the bathroom and bam, HR was up to 90 beats per minute. Oh my God, I thought this is gonna be a long and tough day. I made myself some decaf coffee with some sugar in it. I ate some frosties with rice milk and sugar on top. I ate with absolutely zero appetite and zero motivation, but I figured that I really needed to get some breakfast in. Then I took the last things, the bike water bottles, my wetsuit, the goggles, and I was out the door to catch the shuttle bus with the other athletes to the swim start. While I was sitting on 200 grams of sugar diluted with water. I walked in the pre-dawn light with music in my ears and it did feel kind of epic, like something really cool and quite daunting was about to start. The shuttle took us to the swim start where I blended in with most of the others walking towards T1. Most people had someone with them, their family, a girlfriend, their parents, a friend. I was solo again for the second time. And to be honest, I don't really enjoy it over being with someone. It just helps so much to have someone you can rely on and a personal cheer squad. I think it's advisable to go with someone. I slowly went into T1 and started to unpack my bike I finished setting it up, I put the bottles on the bike, I put the bike computer on the bike, made sure that everything was okay, and then I went and took the half a liter monster bottle and put it in the T1 bag. I dropped off my bike special needs bag, but actually forgot to drop off the run special needs. I was already with my mind at the swim. The swim start is five minutes walk from T1. I headed over to put my wetsuit on and absolutely do the swim practice. That is absolutely mandatory. This is one thing that I learned from the last time. To avoid water shock, always, if it's possible, do the swim practice. One super cool thing that happened was that as I put my wetsuit on, a super cool guy called Marco from Croatia, whose channel I will leave a link in the description, he came over and he said, hi man, I'm the guy from the YouTube comment the other day. And this dude had left an encouraging comment under the video which I, I said I was sick. And man, actually seeing him lifted my spirits. He said, you must be feeling a little better by now, he asked. And I answered, mate, unfortunately, I feel like total garbage. To be honest, yesterday was the worst day since Sunday. Oh, my resting heart rate is right now should be 80 and now it's 105, so. So here it goes. It is the 6th of August, 2022. I just kind of half put my wetsuit on. I'm feeling really, really bad, but I'm gonna give this race a shot anyway. Hoping to manage to power through. Maybe it'll be more about holding on and not uh, like having much control on the race, but here it goes. So I'm gonna do the swim practice now and then I'm gonna see you in some hours. See you later. Finished putting on my wetsuit, I jumped in for the practice swim and this time I was confident compared to 2020. The lake is super murky and dark and basically once you dive in, you can't see anything, not even your elbow. I'm serious with this. But this time I had a 
very precious ally with me. I had Form Smart swim goggles. These smart goggles give you pace and distance. So in a situation like this, a lake with zero visibility, where it is super easy to lose form because you can't see your hands what they're doing, and so you start slowing down, and you have no indication of it because you can't see anything, not even your hands. So having real-time pace and distance, I found to be tremendously helpful. Having the time elapsed helps to understand how far along you are. Also, this time the weather in Tallinn was great. It had been sunny the days prior to the race and the lake ended up being a perfect 22 degrees. Great for a wetsuit legal swim. I got out from swim practice and I self-seeded to the swim start area. It was divided in brackets and there were brackets from sub one hour swim, one hour to one hour and 15 minutes, one hour and 15 minutes to one hour and 30 and so on. This time I seeded into the bracket slightly faster than me, one hour to one hour and 15 minutes. I did this because having someone to chase after in the water is helpful to me to want to keep up and keep my speed up. And also because I found that I prefer having people overtake me, so that can help with not sighting that much because you just can let them overtake you and follow their arms and just see where their arms are. Suddenly, as I was standing there in the last couple of minutes, I find myself kind of like letting go. I let go of expectations of times and I just thought, dude, it's a miracle you're even here. Just dive in and see what happens. And just like that, I inched close to the start line and three, two, one, off I sprinted into the water. I ran as far as I could and then I dived in and started swimming. I swam breathing every two strokes with a challenging but sustainable effort, blending in with the others. The first buoy came and we turned to the left. Now I could see the sunrise reflecting off the ripples in the water and I kind of thought, man, this is pretty epic. 500 meters in, I started feeling not garbage. I kept on swimming, breathing every two, sighting every 10 strokes and focusing on good form and feeling the forward motion, feeling my hands reaching out and swimming. The swim in an Ironman is the shortest discipline, but personally, it still is pretty long for me. Midway at 1900 meters, I started thinking, man, I'm ready to get out. And there started the slog. Still a long way to go, halfway to go. But I clicked into a very comfortable rhythm and pace, so I just put my head down and got it done. What happened was at around the 2.5k mark, I started getting some really bad cramps in my calves, but they eventually worked themselves out after about one kilometer. And before I knew it, I saw the last red buoy for the turn towards the exit. I went around it and then I started kicking to wake up the legs and swimming a bit harder. As soon as I could put my feet down, I started walking out the water, heading into T1, while immediately taking off my wetsuit, my cap and my goggles. The swim ended up being one minute and 54 seconds per 100 meter, closing off the swim in one hour and 12 minutes, with which I'm really happy. I was unexplainably feeling a bit better. I entered T1 as a man possessed. Last time I had lost so much time, seven minutes in T1, and every minute in transition is so precious. It is literally free speed that can play a crucial role in banking time for the marathon. I put my helmet on, I chugged the half liter monster in one sip, I'm not kidding, put my socks on and dropped my bag off at the transition exit. I ran towards my bike, took it off the rack and I was out. Two minutes transition time and I was stoked. I jumped on my bike and I started pedaling with my feet on top of the shoes that were already clipped into the pedals for a couple of minutes. And then when I was on a, on a calm and wide piece of road, I slid my shoes on. I started riding paying attention to my HR and it was 167 beats per minute. And there was an immediately a very short hill, but pretty punchy. I thought, man, I'm screwed because basically I thought that my HR was gonna be at that high forever because I had a fever basically, I thought I had a fever. So I focused on getting the HR back under 150 or close to 150. I needed to monitor this really carefully because of the fact that I thought I had a fever. So I didn't know what could happen during exertion. But to my complete and utter disbelief, everything was normal. Normal power to normal heart rate. So I started getting into a rhythm. Normalized power of around 200 watts and a sub 0.8 intensity factor. Of course, like an idiot, I started surging to overtake people like after four minutes, but I was feeling good. So I took some pretty big risks now thinking back, but in that moment I felt confident and I think they kind of paid off because the beginning of the bike is always pretty tricky to not surge because there are a lot of people on the road and they're all doing different paces. So overtaking is pretty much a must until you find the people who are doing kind of like the same pace as you. I started eating every 20 minutes, maple syrup alternated with a gel and then sugar water. I monitored my glucose levels on the Super Sapiens Energy Band, which was super handy. And after one hour, I felt great. I felt really good. The only problem that I was feeling was some, I think, extra heaviness in the legs that I would not have felt if I wasn't feeling sick. 
but I, I accepted this was just something due to the illness and I knew that my muscles could push the watts that I was sustaining which are super low, nothing, nothing incredible, but I knew that my muscles could do it. So I just kept on doing it. In the second hour, something crazy happened. It started raining immense amounts. Two hours, torrential downpour, wetting the roads and making it pretty miserable. But to be honest, I didn't care at all. The feeling of being possessed that I had in T1 kept on getting stronger and stronger as I mashed on the pedals with water splashing everywhere. It was really epic, actually. The other thing that I made sure to do was to really enjoy the day, smiling at every single volunteer and anyone on the side of the road cheering. The night before on Instagram, a friend from Estonia had sent me a DM. Don't worry about not feeling great. The energy of the crowd supporting will get you through. And I thought, he is so right. Let's try and feed off that energy, the energy from the crowd and it worked. I loved it and as soon as I smiled and made eye contact with, with the supporters and said hello, I was filled with a feeling of gratitude, positive thoughts and emotions. I could see they were super stoked on the, on the connection and I was truly grateful for their energy. They had taken time out of their day to be there and cheer this idiot riding his bike and I kind of like really acknowledged that. The bike course is flat with some rolling sections. There were some headwinds, but they then turned into tailwinds. So it all kind of evened that itself out. I was traveling super light on the bike with only carbs and some electrolytes. So I relied on energy stations for water and extra electrolytes. I would slow down, take a bottle of water, guzzle it down, and then throw the bottle away before the end of the trash zone. This strategy I would advise anybody to do. It is really great because you keep your bike very light and you can have water, which is basically the only thing that you're missing. The rain now started taking a toll on me and my glucose levels dropped to sub 80 actually, which was absolutely not great. So instead of eating every 20 minutes, I just smashed in 100 grams of sugar water in one minute and the levels came back up. I could see them trending back up. And so did the energy. I kind of got some energy back. The second half of the bike, the sun came out. It was amazing. I was getting more emotional every minute that passed. There was one thing about the past months, about what I was experiencing on this day and the effort I was holding, which was hard, but not impossible, that sent me into some kind of like a semi-psychedelic trip. I felt like high, for real, like I was on some sort of drug, but nope, it was just watts, emotions, endorphins and the crowd. I thought a lot about how much I wanted to be there, about all the things that had happened in the past months, including the biggest and harshest breakup of my life, but also beautiful things and discoveries I had made about myself. I kept on pedaling, more motivated than ever. And suddenly, before I realized it, we were at kilometer 130. And here I started feeling the fatigue in the legs a bit. I thought, okay, time to go conservative. The only thing you have to do now is not overbike today and save a lot of juice for the hilly marathon. I knew how hard the back end of the marathon was going to be. So now I went to, into kind of like a conservative approach. I kept on guzzling down maple syrup and sports drink at every aid station. And then I hit the last 15 kilometers headed to T2. This was a semi downhill and with some section with some tailwinds. I felt light and I felt ready to get off the bike. As I made my way towards the seaplane harbor in Tallinn, I finished off the maple syrup, slid out of my cycling shoes and got ready to dismount closing off the bike section in five hours and 10 minutes with an average speed of 34.5 kilometers per hour. The bike ended up being at a 0.72 intensity factor. Normalized power ended up being 202 watts. Average heart rate was 138 beats per minute. A big improvement from the first time. In transition to Ironman Tallinn this year had catchers, which was awesome. I got to the dismount line and all I had to do was to give my bike to the catcher and they wrapped it for me. I zoomed past all the racked bags, grabbed mine, took off my helmet, put on the alpha flies that had elastic laces on them, pulled out the 750 milliliter bottle that I had with 200 grams of sugar inside and I chugged it in one go. Literally, I, I drank all the bottle in one go. Another thing I had prepared was a Ziploc bag with all my nutrition and anything that I needed for the run inside. I actually saw this done by Justin Metzler in an Ironman a couple of weeks before Tallinn and it makes so much sense. I just grabbed this bag and I started running. In the first kilometers, I put everything in my pockets or ate stuff. This saves precious time. Close my bag, I dropped it off at the exit and I was out on the run course with another two minute transition. The run is a four loop, very rolling run course. And I basically just said, let's go. I ran at a comfortable, but faster than I was planning pace, gauging my effort on feel and heart rate, trying to not go over 160 for the first loops. There was no dreaming of a negative split on this course. I knew that the toll of the hills and the long false flats would take on my legs, especially after kilometer 30. I vividly remembered that. I went out at around 430 pace, which 
gradually came down to around a five minute kilometer and I started running the first loop feeling confident. A thing that I kept on doing was I smiled every time someone along the course cheered and in Thailand there is a lot of that. There is a lot of crowd and it is really amazing actually. I was so grateful that I had made it to this point. I almost couldn't believe it. I just kept on running and at every single aid station I took one Gatorade one cola, another Gatorade, another cola. In some aid station, I would take a Red Bull. I also took two caffeine gels in the first kilometers that I had with me, chewed down a handful of vegan gummy bears, which I stopped doing immediately because they dried up my mouth and they were very hard to chew. I decided I was going to do only liquids and gels, no solid food until the end. By the time I got to kilometer eight, I was feeling kind of good, but it was starting to heat up. Progressively, I actually started feeling a bit weaker in the next kilometer. So I started doubling down on sports drinks for the electrolytes and I started picking of gels every single aid station. They had Morton gels, which I actually have always bashed, thinking they were the same as sugar water. But can I be completely honest, I am a Morton convert because they are amazing. The delivery they have, when I eat a, a normal gel like Enervit, I always get some pain on this side or this side. With Morton, I had zero pain and I just could chug in one or two gels after every aid station. I felt a bit better after eating and drinking more and I headed into the second loop still confident, locking in pace with some other guys and actually chatting to a couple of people. One thing I did, I kept my sunglasses off for as long as I could. I really wanted to experience everything that was going on, no filters. I wanted the bright light, I wanted the vibrant colors, the sounds, the atmosphere. On the bike, they had put a sign up on the side of the road that said, remember, you paid for this, enjoy it. And man, that was true. So I chose to enjoy it as much as I could. I wanted to make the most out of the complete experience. The kilometers kept on clocking up through the uphills and the downhills, and the pace was getting a bit slower, but nothing major. I kept on downing sports drink, cola, gels at every aid station and I started pouring water over my head because it was pretty hot. Another thing that really helped me and that I tapped into was anytime I heard some music along the course, it gave me a little boost. Music can trigger emotions, just like some drugs can actually do. And in my personal case, music has a really huge impact on how I'm feeling, my thoughts and my emotions. Every time I heard music, I kind of managed to tap into a more positive state of mind, even though I was starting to hurt. And that really helped. The first half marathon went by with a 145 split, four minutes, 59 seconds per K. I had banked some time. And at this point, I was just basically waiting for it to get really hard. And this took one more loop. I knew it was coming, but I did not expect it this way. I hit the wall at kilometer 31, like a real brick wall. It was super harsh. The course in Tallinn is never flat, literally all ups and downs and long false flats. Also with some wind in some points. My problem is not gonna be the cardio, it's gonna be the legs, I thought after the first few kilometers. And man, was I right. I could not move my legs anymore. They weighed a thousand kilograms and every step was basically agony. I'm not making stuff, this is the truth. This is the real truth. I had to walk an aid station. I guzzled down everything I could, hoping it would help, but nothing. I started running again, but definitely I was not feeling as good as before and I could not maintain that pace. The problem with Tallinn's constantly rolling run course is that if you are slowing down on an uphill, you will come to a stop. Whereas on a normal flat marathon course, where you would just drop down to a slow pace, you might drop down to a 6.30 pace, which is like really slow on flat, but here it's easy to end up being at seven plus minutes per kilometer pace, which can really have a serious impact on any time you have banked before. At one point, I had to walk an uphill. I was really beat up and in a bad place. And suddenly, uh, I think it was an English guy. And if you watch this video, please, please, please leave a comment or contact me. But this guy, we had crossed paths before on the course and he had said hi and said, uh, I watch your YouTube videos. And as I was walking this uphill, we crossed paths again. And he looked at me, he was happy. And he said, you got this mate. I looked back up at him with death in my eyes. And I just mumbled some incomprehensible words back. Like, I, I can't do this, I can't do this. He looked at me. And he said, hey man, go for it. You inspired me to be here. And those few words started a sequence of thought processes, all of the things that I'd gone through, how grateful I was to be there in this moment and how rare and hard it is to reach these moments. You train for months for just a handful of hours. I realized that I needed to make this moment count. I needed to make this moment count. I had to find a way to give everything. I started running again and I pulled out my final card. I took two ibuprofen and they worked. I got back into a rhythm, slower than before, but I was running again. I glanced at my watch, nine hours and 50 minutes with seven kilometers to go. How well can I execute this last part? I dug really deep and I ran. One step after the other, with cheering from the crowd, I got to kilometer 37. The end was in sight. 
kilometer 38, 39. Three kilometers left, I exclaimed to the volunteers at the last aid station. I said, well done. They answered and I got pumped. 40 kilometers, 41 kilometers. I was at the end. A wave of mega emotion hit me with 500 meters to go. And I started tearing up. It's done. But the tears started choking me. So I pulled myself together and I focused just on finishing. One of the most brutal things of looped courses in Ironmans is that every time you finish a loop, you pass by the split between having to turn right for another lap or heading left to the finish line. And every loop you have to go right, it hurts like crazy. But now it was time to make that long dreamt about left turn. I was headed towards the finish line. And there were so many people there. As soon as they saw that I had made that left turn and was heading towards the finish, they started cheering like crazy. I smiled and kept on running towards the shoot. The finish line this year was inside the Seaplane Harbour Museum. I put my feet on the carpet with the logos, darker lights, smoke, music hit me as I was taking those final steps. I thought I can't, I cannot believe this is happening. That's what I thought with a, with a big smile on my face. I high-fived Till Shank, who's the guy announcing, and I ran towards the finish line feeling a mix of emotions so powerful. It had only happened a couple of times in my life. Pride, joy, sadness, but most of all gratitude. I crossed the line after a three hour and a 50 minute marathon and I started, I started tearing up. I was so demolished by the effort. I was in utter disbelief as to what had happened. Feeling so sick in the morning and now I had managed to do this. I literally could not believe it. I was flooded with emotions from all the sacrifice I had made and how a lot of things that had just happened in the past now all made sense. All of the choices that I've made in the past months, but also in the past years, all made sense now because they had led me to this exact moment. It's truly an incredible feeling that I hope you can feel your version of. It's very hard to explain and communicate, but if there's one thing I would like to share with you in this video is that it is a one of a kind feeling that is worth it. I crossed the finish line in 10 hours, 18 minutes and 48 seconds. By no means an elite time, but for me, it represents so much. All the growth I have gone through in the past two years represented that I can do hard things if they are the thing that I really want to do. It represented applying myself to something with all the resources I have. And one of the coolest things that had happened in these days was people coming up to me to say hi and sharing with me how this channel had helped them with their preparation. Be it by knowing that, that the lake sucks or that the marathon is hilly. And this was so cool because kind of like everything now made sense. I had helped other people to reach their finish line. And this channel is about that. Be it in Ironman, endurance, fueling, mindset. This channel is not about me. This channel is about you, about sharing what I have learned in a way that has practical and actionable takeaways for your life and journey. And I hope that my suffering and these silly videos help. The biggest lessons that I learned during this race are, it's not you versus you, like Iron Man says, in my opinion but it is you with you. During the race, be your own best teammate, be your own fan and be your own support squad. It is not a battle against ourselves. Okay, maybe in training or maybe just to prove something to, to ourselves that we have changed. But in the race, I try to take that negative energy and transform it into positive help, touching into myself as a teammate and not as an enemy. Believe and nurture yourself. Eat a lot. Train to eat way more than you think you can handle because it really pays dividends. I ended up with 1,300 grams of carbs for the whole day and to be honest I think I should have eaten a bit more. I decided to aim for 100 plus grams of carbs after a pretty eye-opening conversation with Super Sapiens and on what professional athletes eat during a race. This coaching call convinced me to train eating way more in order to know that I would be able to handle that amount of carbs during the race with no problems. And after experimenting a lot in training, for example, partly inspired by Lionel Sanders, I switched from straight sugar water to maple syrup, plus sugar water in another bottle, plus gels. I was confident that I could eat enough carbs to fuel me during the event and not to just finish, but thrive. Enjoy the day. No matter what our goals are, we are not going to win money. <laughs> So I really made sure that I enjoyed the experience because in reality, that's what it's all about. And it is really awesome with all the support in Thailand. Being in a foreign country, these people don't know you and they're clapping for you. Man, it was so 
cool. Work on the bike a lot, both in terms of fitness and aerodynamics during training. And during the race, hold the aero position as much as possible and make sure that you don't overbike. The bike, as I detailed in the training video, is in my opinion the key to still having energy for a decent marathon. The bike is the longest part of any triathlon, especially Ironman, so it is fundamental to nail the intensity. Connect with others on the race course. During the run, when I was really in pain, I voiced it to people who were next to me and often they would feel the same way and it helped get through some pretty tough moments. Nailing transition can be a huge boost in free time. I did both transitions in two minutes. Everything was prepared and I had rehearsed these transitions. In closing, if you ever had the dream of doing an Ironman, or if you are in doubt about starting, the answer relies only within you. All I can do is share my experience, and to me, all the grind to get here, all the time, all the sacrifices were worth it 100%. Early morning, the fatigue, the injuries, the huge entry fee and time commitment, but also the self-development, the happiness and the joy that I found both in training and in the race. In some way, everything that had happened in the past and every choice I've made just made perfect sense. I would say if you feel the magnetic pull towards doing an Ironman, do it. It really can be a life-changing experience. Don't be afraid to reach out to people who have already gone through the journey for tips and tricks. I'm very happy with this result because it is a huge personal best for me, but especially the fact is I had been envisioning and kind of like dreaming about this day ever since I did my first Ironman because I knew that in the first Ironman I had left a lot in the tank. I, I hadn't given my all and I literally knew that I could do way better but the problem is you can't just know it. You have to actually do it. You have to be there at the start line and then you have to give everything you've got during the race. No other moment counts. This time I raced emotionally and by feel. I took some big risks and gave it literally everything that I had. I could not have run one second faster or one second longer. But as I said before, I also made sure that I really enjoyed the day. Smiling at every volunteer, at everyone who cheered, and the experience was just so much deeper and more emotional. It was really deep with high highs and very low lows, especially during the two hours torrential rain on the bike. It was intense and one of the happiest experiences of my life. I was aiming for sub 11 hours, but 1018 man, it's just, it's wild. I just can't believe it. And times are meaningless. I mean, I'm never going to Kona. It doesn't, it doesn't even matter, but it just shows that Ironman Triathlon to me is a great tool. A tool to journey into oneself and to discover ourselves better. And this time it was exactly that and more. At the end of the bike, I really felt like I was on some kind of drug. I was high as a kite. During the marathon, I felt some of the hardest pain and I pushed through. And I really can't believe it all happened. Would I recommend the Ironman Tallinn as your first Ironman? The bike course is very good and the swim, wetsuit legal. The lake is okay, I mean, it's nothing like crazy unless it's super cold, but it, being in August, it, it never gets like really, really cold. It gets like to 18 degrees, 19 degrees maybe. It's a very nice destination because the city is awesome, the people are awesome. I wouldn't like recommend it, but I say, I'd say it's okay. To be honest, if I could go back, I would choose a course with a less rolling marathon because it is really hard. 300 meters is a lot of elevation and you can really feel it in your legs. So if you choose to do this race, be mindful of this. So be mindful of the fact that you might slow down really a lot on the back end of the marathon, especially after 30 kilometers, which is where basically everybody struggles. Maybe as a first one, there are kind of like easy Ironmans. That's what I would say. So some closing thank yous. And well, of course, thank you to the brands that uh, give me some gear to test and to represent and that is Super Sapiens who also helped tremendously in dining in my nutrition. Thanks to PPR team who is my triathlon team that I work with and they also give me super tips and a lot of gear. Sumapo official for the swim gear and the sunglasses and Brighton Sport for the sport with the bike computers. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Please, if you watch this video, please leave a comment or connect with me. The guy who said you got this, you inspired me to be here on the marathon and got me running again. Please, please, please leave a comment or send me a DM on Insta because maybe you might never know this, but you really had a big impact on the day. So guys, I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you 
figure out some stuff that can help you in your own races. This was truly an unforgettable journey. Tallinn is a great place. It's a great place for a race. Thank you to everybody who sent me messages when I was feeling really sick and down and giving me like tips and tricks to try and heal. Your support was very, very much appreciated and I, I, I truly can't believe this happened. <laughs> I can't believe it happened. I'm in Tallinn 2022, incredibly stoked. And that's all I've got, guys. Thanks for watching this video. If you like the story, if you found this video helpful in some way, please consider leaving a like or a comment and maybe subscribing to the channel for more videos coming in the future about endurance, nutrition, and mindset. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.